This video exists to help you solve one of your major life problems. And that problem is this. Suppose somebody were to walk up to you in a grocery store, and maybe this is like an attractive person, maybe somebody that you would potentially be interested in. And suppose they were to ask you, what is implicit differentiation and how do I do it? Well, before watching this video, you'd probably be hemming and hawing, uh, well, you see, uh, you know, maybe you make something up. Uh, the point is you would just feel dumb and you'd be like, why am I so bad in these social situations? Well, I'm happy to help you out today so you will never be caught in that kind of embarrassing situation of not knowing what implicit differentiation is. Let's begin here with an example. The point 4, 3 is on the graph of the equation x squared plus y squared equals 25. And I'm not making that up. If you plug in 4 for x and 3 for y, you'll see you get 16 plus 9 is equal to 25. So 4, 3 really is on the graph of this equation. Find the slope of the tangent line at that point. So here in Desmos, I've graphed the equation. And notice it's a circle, right? It's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 5. And notice the point 4, 3 is on the graph. And the question is, what is the slope of the tangent line here? Now, notice that x squared plus y squared equals 25, this circle, is not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. But can we still find the slope of the tangent line here? We're actually going to do this using two different methods. So first of all, what we're going to do is take our original equation, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and solve it for y, and then take the derivative. And then the second method we'll use is something called implicit differentiation. So let's do method one first, where we're going to solve for y. So our initial equation, again, is x squared plus y squared equals 25. If we solve this for y, what we're going to do is subtract x squared from both sides. So notice we'll have y squared equals 25 minus x squared. And then so y will be the square root, or it's really plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. And going back to Desmos, you see y equals the square root of 25 minus x squared is actually this function in black. And I say it's a function because notice it does pass the vertical line test. And here y equals minus the square root of 25 minus x squared is also a function. That's the lower half of the circle. And that part does pass the vertical line test. But the point 4, 3 is on the top half. So we're actually just going to use y equals plus the square root of 25 minus x squared. So this is what y is. If we want to find the slope of the tangent line at that point, we need to take the derivative of the y. So dy dx, or y prime, what is that? Well, let's rewrite this as 25 minus x squared to the 1 half power. And again, we're just going to, this is really plus or minus, but we're just going to use the plus because, again, we're on the top half of that circle where the point 4, 3 was. So what is y prime? Well, y prime is going to be, what's the derivative of this function? Well, it's going to be 1 half times 25 minus x squared to the minus 1 half, and then times negative 2x. So we use the chain rule there, right? The derivative of something to the 1 half power would be 1 half times the something to the minus 1 half, and then times the derivative of the something. Now, we can simplify this by multiplying the minus 2x times 1 half. The 2s will cancel, and we just get minus x. And this right here is really 1 over 25 minus x squared to the positive 1 half power. So if we simplify this, we end up getting negative x over, and this down here is really the square root of 25 minus x squared. Now, remember, we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line at the point 4, 3, so we need to plug in 4 for x. So y prime evaluated at x equals 4 is going to be, well, negative 4 over the square root of 25 minus 4 squared. And that is negative 4 over the square root of, well, 25 minus 16 is really just 9. So we get negative 4 thirds. That is the slope of the tangent line. And notice here, that looks reasonable. Certainly, it's a negative slope, and the slope is a little more than negative 1. It's negative 4 thirds. Negative 1 and 1 third is the slope. So again, with this method, what we did was we took our original equation, x squared plus y squared equals 25, and we solved it for y. 
Okay, we subtracted x squared from both sides. We got y squared equals this. And so y was plus or minus the square root of this. And we ended up using the plus part because the 0.4 comma 3 was on the top half of the circle. And then we took the derivative of this. We took the derivative using the chain rule. And we simplified. And then finally, once we had a formula for y prime in terms of x, we plugged in 4 into that formula. And we ended up getting negative 4 thirds. Now, another way to do this is to use implicit differentiation. So what we're going to do with implicit differentiation is to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So if this equals this, then certainly the derivative of this should equal the derivative of this. So we're going to do d dx of x squared plus y squared. It will equal d dx of 25. Now, the derivative on the right-hand side, the derivative of 25, is of course just 0. On the left-hand side, what's the derivative of this? Well, the derivative of x squared is just 2x. What's the derivative of y squared? Well, we're going to treat the x and y differently because we're taking a derivative with respect to x. We're thinking of y as being a function of x. In fact, it is a function of x. In fact, didn't we find a formula for that function up here? y was a function of x. It was really two functions, right? We have the top half of the circle and the bottom half of the circle. So how do you take the derivative of a function of x squared, something squared? Well, you would do 2 times that thing to the 1, but then times the derivative of that thing, dy dx. So I could put dy dx there or y prime. So notice the x's and y's kind of got treated differently. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dx. What we're really using there is the chain rule. Okay, we're taking a derivative with respect to x. In fact, you could think of this as this first part is 2x times dx dx, but dx dx is just 1, plus 2y times dy dx. So whenever you do this type of derivative here, this implicit differentiation, you end up treating the x's and y's differently. So what is dy dx? Well, let's subtract 2x from both sides here. We get 2y times dy dx equals negative 2x. And then we'll divide both sides by 2y. So dy dx is going to be negative 2x over 2y, which we could cancel the 2s and we get negative x over y. So notice our formula for dy dx is negative x over y. Notice our formula has a y in it. Now, is this the same thing we had before? Well, dy dx up here was negative x over this square root, but wasn't that square root y? So this is really just negative x over y, right? That's what we found our y was right here. So dy dx is negative x over y. We haven't even solved it for y. So how do we find dy dx at the point 4 comma 3? Because isn't that what we're trying to do? Find the slope of the tangent line at 4 comma 3. Notice the x is 4 and the y is 3. So we're going to write dy dx evaluated, instead of just saying evaluated at x equals 4, we're actually going to be evaluating at the ordered pair 4 comma 3. So notice we're going to take our formula right here that we had, negative x over y, and we're going to plug in 4 for x and 3 for y, and notice we got the same answer, negative 4 thirds. So this process here is called implicit differentiation because notice we never solved this equation explicitly for y. So here we have a solution for y explicitly, right? y is just equal to this. y is explicitly has this formula. It's really two formulas, one with a plus and one with a minus. Here, y is defined implicitly. We don't have just y equals something involving x. We, we have y defined implicitly in terms of x. So this is called implicit differentiation. Now, with this particular problem, we could solve it for y. So we actually had two different methods that we could use and that we did use. But sometimes we have to use implicit differentiation because it's hard or impossible to solve for y. So here's an example in Desmos. We have x cubed plus y cubed equals 10xy. How could you solve this for y so that you get y all by itself on one side of the equation and the other side only having x's and no y's? Well, there's no nice way to solve this for y. Okay, so if we wanted to find the slope of the tangent line, let's say at 5 comma 5, we'd have to use implicit differentiation. That method 1 would not work. Same thing here. Try to solve this for y. You might say, well, we have two terms of the y. We could factor out a y, but then you're still going to have a y cubed plus x. There's no nice way to just write y equals something that only involves x. 
right? So notice this is kind of a strange looking graph here too. Uh, but a question you could ask is what is the slope of the tangent line? So let's say at a point one comma one, right? What is the slope of that tangent line? How could we find that? Well, what we need to use is implicit differentiation. And one more example here. Imagine trying to solve this for y, right? We say y there and y there. Try to get y all by itself on one side of the equation and solve this explicitly for y and then take the derivative. Well, there's no nice way to solve this explicitly for y, but here y is defined implicitly in terms of x. So we could use implicit differentiation. So again, often we can't use that first method where we just solve the equation explicitly for y. Let's do another example. Now this one actually could be solved explicitly for y. In fact, I challenge you to do this, solve this for y. You're gonna end up having to maybe add a y cubed to both sides and then take a cube root of both sides. You could solve this explicitly for y and then take the derivative uh, to find the slope. But uh, let's, let, uh, let's let 2x to the fifth minus y cubed plus six equals zero verify that the point one comma two is on the graph. So I'm telling you that, that one comma two is on the graph of this. But how could we verify that? Well, you could plug in one for X and two for Y and see if you get a true statement. So notice that two times one to the fifth minus two cubed plus six, does that equal zero? Well, yeah, this is just two minus eight, which is negative six plus six, that does equal zero. So the point one comma two really is on the graph. In fact, if we go to Desmos, here's the graph of this. And notice the point one comma two is on the graph. Now, what we're gonna try to find is what is the slope of the tangent line at that point? How steep is the curve at that point? So to do this, we're gonna use implicit differentiation. So we're gonna do d dx of the left-hand side is gonna equal d dx of the right-hand side. Now, of course, the derivative of zero is just zero. The derivative of the left-hand side, well, the derivative of two x to the fifth is 10 x to the fourth. The derivative of y cubed would be three y squared, but then times dy dx. Again, we're thinking of y as being a function of x. We're taking a derivative with respect to x here. So we treat the x's and y's differently. So if we have some functions cubed, the derivative will be three times the function squared times the derivative of the function. Again, that's just the chain rule. Now, again, here we took the derivative of two x to the fifth, that's just 10 x to the fourth. Why don't we have something here? Well, you could think of it as having a dx dx, but dx dx is just one, so we don't even write it in there. And finally, we have plus zero because the derivative of six is zero. So how do we solve this for dy dx? Well, what we're gonna do is to subtract 10 x to the fourth from both sides. So subtract 10 x to the fourth, so what we get is negative three y squared dy dx equals negative 10 x to the fourth. Then we're gonna divide both sides by three y squared. So we're gonna put over three y squared or negative three y squared actually. And we'll get dy dx equals negative 10 x to the fourth divided by negative three y squared. And why am I dividing? Well, because this is a times here, right? This is a multiply. So if this were a plus here, we'd have to subtract this or or add it since it's negative. But since it's times, we're gonna divide by it. So notice this simplifies to be 10x to the fourth over three y squared. Now the question is, what is the slope of the tangent line at that point one comma two? By the way, notice it's kind of interesting here. Our final answer doesn't just have x's, it actually has a y in it. So how do we find dy dx evaluated at the point one comma two? Well, again, we're gonna plug in one for x and two for y into this formula. So we get 10 times one to the fourth over three times two squared. And that ends up being 10 over 12, three times four. So 10 twelfths or five six, if you reduce it. That is the slope of this blue line. It's 10 twelfths or five six. So again, what we did is we took the derivative of both sides with respect to x, the derivative of 2x to the fifth was 10x to the fourth. The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared times dy dx. And we end up solving for dy dx. And the formula for dy dx involves both x's and y's. 
So we're not just going to plug in an x coordinate in here for x. We'll have to plug in both the x and y coordinates. So we're at the point 1, 2. We plug in 1 for x and 2 for y, and we get this as our final answer. OK, now let's do a bunch of examples. Now, in these examples, though, we're just going to find dy, dx. We're not actually going to find the slope at a particular point. So we're not going to plug in an ordered pair. We're just going to find the formula for dy, dx. So let's go through these one by one. In part A, what we're going to do is take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So I'm not going to actually write in the d dx on both sides. But notice on the right-hand side, of course, the derivative of 0 is just 0. The derivative of two, y squared is going to be 2y times dy dx. Now, the derivative of 4y would just be 4, but then times dy dx. And last of all, the derivative of 9x is just 9. Now, notice we actually have three terms on the left-hand side, three things that are being added up. Two of them have a dy dx in them, and one doesn't. So we're going to bring the 9 over to the right-hand side. We'll, write, we'll subtract 9 from both sides. Now, these two terms that are left both have a dy dx, so let's factor out the dy dx. We have dy dx times 2y, and we also have dy dx times 4. So notice we have really 2y plus 4 times dy dx equals negative 9. So what will dy dx be? Well, dy dx is going to be this divided by this. And right, we're dividing because this is really a multiply here. So dy dx will equal negative 9 divided by 2y plus 4. Now, notice our final answer has y's in it instead of just x's. In fact, I don't see any x's here. But our final answer has y's in it. And that's exactly what you'd expect when you use implicit differentiation is that your final answer will sometimes have y's. Now let's look at part b. How do we take the derivative of this? In particular, for this part, first part, x cubed times y to the fifth, how do we take the derivative? Well, we're going to have to use the product rule. We have a product of two functions. So we're going to do the first function, x cubed, times the derivative of the second one. Well, the derivative of y to the fifth is 5y to the fourth times dy dx, plus the second function, y to the fifth, times the derivative of the first function, which would be 3x squared. So that this all here is the derivative of this first part here, that first term. Well, what's the derivative of 8x squared? Well, it's just 16x. We have minus 16x. The derivative of 7 is just 0, so we won't even write it. And the derivative of the 0 is just 0. So again, notice we have 1, 2, 3 terms on the left-hand side. Only one of those terms has a dy dx in it, so we'll leave that on the left side. We'll subtract these to bring them over here. So what we end up with is this over here is actually 5x cubed y to the fourth dy dx. And it will equal, well, we'll add this to both sides. We get 16x and subtract this. We're going to get minus, we'll put the 3 out front, 3y to the fifth x squared. And finally, how do we get this dy dx all by itself? Well, this is being multiplied here, so we're going to divide by this. So dy dx is going to be the right-hand side divided by this. Now, again, if this were a plus, then we'd be subtracting this, but it's a times. So dy dx is going to equal 16x minus 3y to the fifth x squared divided by 5x cubed y to the fourth. And that's our final answer. And notice our answer has both x's and y's in it. So if we were trying to find what's the slope of the tangent line at some point, at some ordered pair x comma y, we'd plug in the x-coordinate for x, for the, all these x's here, and we plug in the y-coordinate for y, and that would end up giving us the slope of the tangent line. Okay, now this next example has an e to the y, so how do we take the derivative here? Well, remember the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of e to the y is going to be e to the y times dy dx. Again, we're kind of treating the x's and y's differently because we're taking a derivative of both sides with respect to x. Okay, so we're thinking of the y as being a function of x. So we're really using the chain rule here. The derivative of e to the y is e to the y times dy to the x. Now, what's the derivative of x to the 7th? It's 7x to the 6th. What's the derivative of y cubed? It's 3y squared times dy dx. Now, notice we have a total of three terms here, things that are being added or subtracted. Two of them have a dy dx. So let's gather the terms that have a dy dx on one side of the equation, and then we're going to factor out the dy dx. And let's put the other terms that don't have dy dx on the other side of the equation. So basically, we're just going to add this term to both sides. So if we do that, we'll get 3y squared dy dx plus e to the y 
dy dx is equal to 7x to the sixth. Now notice again, both terms on the left side have a dy dx in them, so we're going to factor it out. Write this as 3y squared plus e to the y. And the right-hand side is still 7x to the sixth. So to get dy dx all by itself, instead of just dy dx times this, we're going to divide by this. So dy dx will equal 7x to the sixth divided by 3y squared plus e to the y. And that's our final answer. Now part D, notice that we have a natural log. So how do we find dy dx? Well, the derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth minus, well, the derivative of y squared is 2y, but then times dy dx. What's the derivative of natural log of y? Well, it's 1 over y, but then times dy dx. Now, again, we have two terms that have a dy dx in them. Let's actually bring them both over to the right-hand side. We have another term that doesn't have dy dx. So what we're going to end up with is 5x to the fourth on the left-hand side equals, and the right-hand side will have this term plus this term, right? It's a minus, so it'll be a plus. And let me do this kind of in one step here. Let's actually add, them to, add this term to both sides, and then we'll factor out the dy dx all in one step. And we end up with plus 2y. It's plus because we're adding. Plus 1 over y. And what we end up with is dy dx times the quantity 2y plus 1 over y. So I did kind of two steps at once there. Notice that dy dx will be 5x to the fourth divided by this right here. dy dx will be this over this, 2y plus 1 over y. All right, now how do we do the derivative here? Well, the derivative of 7xy, we're going to have to use the product rule. So we'll think of this as a 7x times y. We have a product of two functions. The way we do the product rule is the first function, 7x, times the derivative of the second. Well, what's the derivative of y? It's just 1, but then times dy dx. Plus the second function, y, times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of 7x? It's just 7. And then minus, well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 9y would just be 9, but then times dy dx. Now you might wonder, why did this not have a dy dx in it? Usually when we have a y, we have a dy dx. Well, notice when we did the product rule, we did the first function, 7x, times the derivative of the second one, the derivative of y was 1 times dy dx, plus the second function, y. And notice we're not taking a derivative. We just have the second function now times the derivative of the first. The derivative of 7x is just 7. So this term does not have a dy dx. So of our four terms that we have here, two of them have dy dx. So let's gather them on the left-hand side, let's say, and let's take our other two terms and put them on the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, we're just going to have a 2x minus 7y. On the left-hand side, we'll have these two terms. I'm going to factor out the dy dx, and I'm kind of doing a couple steps at once here. What we're left with is a 7x there, and we're going to subtract this from both sides, so it would really be minus 9. Okay, so dy dx will be this divided by this. Now, I went through this kind of quickly here, but you can check my algebra and see that hopefully it's, it's correct. Now, let's do an example here where we actually find the slope of the tangent line at some particular point. Let x to the fifth minus 3y squared equal natural log of y and use implicit differentiation to find y prime, and then evaluate y prime at 2 comma 1. Now, by the way, is 2 comma 1 actually on the graph of this? It turns out it is. If you plug in 2 for x and 1 for y, you're going to get a true statement. Now, natural log of 1 is really just 0. And if you plug in 2 for x, that'll be 32. If you plug in 1 for y, that'll be 32. You'll end up getting 32 minus 32 is 0. So 2 comma 1 really is on the graph. In fact, here's the graph of x to the fifth minus 32y squared equals natural log of y. And you can see the point 2 comma 1 is on the graph. Now the question is, what is the slope of the tangent line there? So let's take the derivative with respect to x. Now the derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. The derivative of 32y squared would be 64y times dy dx. And the derivative of natural log of y is just 1 over y times dy dx. So of our two terms that have a dy dx, uh, one of them is here, one of them is here. Let's put them both on the right-hand side. So what we're going to le be left with is 5x to the fourth equals, on the right-hand side, we're going to have, well, let's do it two steps at once here. We'll have the dy dx times the 1 over y still, this times this, that's this. But we're going to have this 
added to both sides. So we're going to have a 64y over here as well. So you can see if you distribute the dy dx, dy dx times this, dy dx times this, that'll be the same thing as if we added this to both sides. So what is dy dx? Well, dy dx is 5x to the fourth divided by 64y plus 1 over y. So that's the general formula for dy dx. But what is dy dx evaluated at 2 comma 1? So dy dx evaluated at the ordered pair 2 comma 1. Now notice we're not just going to plug in 2 for x. We also have to plug in 1 for y because our derivative formula had not only x's, but it also had y's in it. We have 5 times 2 to the 4th over 64 times 1 plus 1 over 1. And what that is, 2 to the 4th is 16 times 5. That's actually 80. And in the denominator, we get 64 plus 1, that's 65. So our answer is 80 over 65, but we can reduce that because 5 goes into both the numerator and the denominator. And if you reduce this, I believe you get 16 over 13. So 16 thirteenths, so that's really 1 and 3 thirteenths. That's the slope of the tangent line, a little bigger than 1. And as you can see here, that looks reasonable. The slope there is a little bigger than 1. It's actually 16 thirteenths. And for our last problem, how do we find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this equation at the point 3 comma minus 2? Now, by the way, is 3 minus 2 really on the graph? Well, yeah, if you plug in 3 for x minus 2 for y, you're going to see you get 3 times positive 4 equals 12, and that's, that's true. Now, you could do this by solving this explicitly for y, getting y squared equals 12 divided by x. So y would be the square root of 12 over x, and it's really plus or minus the square root of 12 over x. And if we look on Desmos, this is what the graph looks like. Notice this would be plus, the, y equals plus the square root of 12 over x. This would be y equals minus the square root of 12 over x. Now we're going to be interested in the point 3 comma minus 2. So if we were going to use that first method, method 1, we could solve this explicitly for y and then take the derivative. But we'd have to use y equals the negative square root of 12 over x because we're on this bottom piece. And then we plug in 3 for x, and that would give us the slope of the tangent line. OK, but we want to do this by taking the derivative using implicit differentiation. So how do we take the derivative here? Well, the derivative of 12 is just 0. The derivative with respect to x of the left-hand side, what do we get? Well, we have to use the product rule. We have x times y squared. So we have the first function, x, times the derivative of the second one, which would be 2y times dy dx, plus the second function, y squared, times the derivative of the first, while the derivative of x is just 1. So notice, we'll subtract this from both sides. We end up getting a negative y squared on the right side. On the left side, we really have 2xy times dy dx. And so dy dx will be negative y squared over this. Okay, dy dx equals negative y squared over 2xy. So now, what do we get when we actually plug in the ordered pair 3, negative 2? So the question was, what is the slope of the tangent line at this point? Actually, we want to find the equation of the tangent line. But first of all, we want to find the slope of the tangent line. So we're going to plug in 3 for x and negative 2 for y. So we get negative, negative 2 squared over 2 times 3 times negative 2. And what that ends up being is negative 4 in the numerator. So negative 2 squared is positive 4, but we still have a negative and negative 12 in the denominator. So we end up getting positive 1 third. And that certainly looks reasonable that the slope of the tangent line there could be positive 1 third. Now the question is though, what is the equation of that tangent line? So let's remember to find the equation of the tangent line, we need to know a point on the line and the slope of the line. So here's our slope of the line. This is our m. Our x1, y1, our point on the line, is this. And we're going to use the point-slope formula. So we're going to do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we're going to use 1 third for m. And remember, our point was, what was our point? It's 3, negative 2. It's 3, negative 2. So we're going to plug in negative 2 for y. So we get y minus a negative 2 equals 1 third times x minus 3. This is really y plus 2 equals 1 third x minus 1. So distribute the 1 third. And last of all, subtract 2 from both sides. We get y equals 1 third x minus 3. And that's our final answer. And notice that certainly looks reasonable here. It's a slope of 1 third. And notice where does it cross the y-axis at minus 3. 
So yeah, this blue line certainly looks like it's one third x, y equals one third x minus three. 